Hey, Russell Miller here with Uncle Feather Merchants. We're doing reading water with the Euro rig. I'm really excited about this one. Uh, I love this method of fishing. I think it is extremely fun and eye-opening what you can learn from the river. So uh, as we go through the piece of water behind me, uh, I hope you grab a couple little nuggets uh, that you can pick up. I also hope it fishes well because I'd like to show how effective this technique can be. I like to fish a 10 foot three weight. This is the Sage ESN. To me, a 10 foot three weight would be like your nine foot five weight equivalent of the Euro world, right? Uh, this isn't a three weight. I can land just about anything on this fish. It'll flex right down here at the cork and there's tons of graphite. Um, but as we move up through there, I get a really soft, sensitive tip to protect that light tippet that we're gonna be fishing. Um, you know, if we think about the rod and kind of pieces, I've got the butt of a five weight and the tip of a three weight, right? And uh, so this is a 10 foot, it's a really approachable length. There are longer models. They allow you to reach a little bit further out into the water, but the 10 footer is just such a comfortable place. I pair it with the ESN reel. Um, it's a nice close frame reel, big large arbor, picks up the line nicely. Um, the thing I probably like about the reel most is it's got the, uh, the numbered drag, so I can really dial in, and especially when I'm fishing the light stuff, I can rely 100% on the drag to do the work uh, of thinking about letting some tension go, uh, and I can just keep that, that fish corked. Um, off of the reel, I've got a level line uh, to, to cider material, right? Uh, the, uh, the Phantom X leader is an awesome, awesome leader. I've got something just a little different on my own personal rod, but if I was going to be starting, that would 1,000% be the, the leader that I'd be tying on there. Um, I've rigged up 6X today. I don't think we need to go any, uh, any thinner at the moment. Uh, there's some big fish over here. Uh, I'd rather not break them off on camera. That doesn't sound as fun as landing them. Uh, so I've got 6X uh, with the lower flows. I don't need that additional cut rate the 7X may provide me. Uh, so the 6X would be perfect. And then I've got two flies on. Um, as we work up through here, I'll probably change these flies a couple of times, but I'm starting with a little hair's ear tag, tag nymph here uh, and a, uh, a little soft tackle um, cast pupa up here. Um, nothing crazy, uh, but this is my go-to setup. I've been, I've been fishing this rod since Sage came out with it. Uh, I love this rod. I feel like I really know this rod. Uh, I remember listening to a, a Kirk Dieter uh, piece one time and Kirk talked about um, musicians and their instruments and uh, you know B.B. King playing the same guitar his whole career and he knows the exact tone when he's hitting a note. Uh, I think it's kind of similar with a rod like if you get to know your equipment really really well you know how hard you can pull on a fish or you know if, if they're going into a structure you really don't want them to go into you can you really have a good sense of like what is your maximum that you can put on a fish. So we've got a we've got a pretty defined piece of water right in front of us, and we're in the upper third of it here. If I look downstream of me, right, you can see I'm kind of ending the the, the run here at that riffle. We've got a nice flat, and then we've got this piece here. Um, current conditions when it's colder, the fish are going to find that slower, deeper water. Uh, the hatch might make them move into the tail out a little bit more, but this is our A piece of water from about right here up to the very top of this thing. We've got unbelievable foam. Foam is home. Uh, we've got great cloud cover up above. Um, I think we've got a lot of fun in front of us. These methods, uh, when I'm Euro nymphing, I like to go slow and fish it fairly methodically and try to, try to really dial everything in. Um, We've had some changing conditions this morning, uh, and I wouldn't say I've got anything dialed in, so you guys will do some self-discovery along with me, which would be great. But like, I bet in this little chunk here, I could spend an hour to an hour and a half just working this water and feeling really confident that there's plenty of fish here to present my flies to. I'm really excited. Uh, follow along as we go through uh, approaching the water. If you're interested, we've done a video on rigging and we've done a video on flies. Check them out. Also subscribe down below somewhere at the bottom. I hope I'm checking all the boxes. Smash it. Say smash it. Russ. Smash that button, Let's folks. Go. You know, one of the first things I do whenever I walk up to a piece of water is I try to understand the depth 
uh, especially when you're nymphing to really get a sense of how deep you need to be. But as I'm looking and trying to read this water, uh, the, the, the oddest thing is happening. I'm seeing these little noses break the surface. And uh, I know we're talking about Euronymphing here, but uh, one of the things I always do when I'm fishing is I always make sure I have a dry fly rod because uh, you never want to miss an opportunity. So I'm gonna do a quick swap out and it would be silly to not uh, first work your way down, right? The way I like to do anything is work from the top surface down to the bottom, right? So let's get the ones that are up on top here. On the end of my line here, I've got the Comparadon uh, Craig Matthews pattern, just an awesome little Betis imitation here. This one has a little, uh, a little shuck off the back with some Zelon that's just gonna, there was a rise right up there. Um, this little Z line just looks like that little bit of trailing fibers um, on those emergent betas here. So we've kind of got that adult phase and that emergent phase covered in one pattern, which is awesome here. So this is a nine foot three weight, and I'm just trying to work my way up to where I saw that great rise. With these really small flies, if I get it out too far, it can be kind of hard to see. Um, especially as we've got a lot of that kind of low light glare that we get in the late season. There he is right there, just showed himself nicely. So try to make that cast just upstream of the target, boom. And he ate the fly confidently, which was great, it made me look good. Rolling around down in the pit there, oh, he's off. Well, swing and a miss folks, swing and a miss. So, uh, you know, the replay on that, rod angle is really important. You can see as soon as the fish got below me and my angle was poor, uh, the fish came off. Uh, if I could do it over again, I would move with the fish and get downstream. But uh, that's all right, that's all right. So what we're gonna do here after the uh, best friend here, just get that wing just work that in there a little bit. Just so my fly's riding really high so I can see it. And make sure that, uh, make sure I can see what I'm doing here. So let's see, I saw another rise just upstream of that one. So we're gonna see if anything else wants to play. There is one there. Oh, obstruction in the rear. It's penalty box, folks, penalty box. Let me grab this real quick. There's the crew. Hi, crew. Yvonne will edit this out, I'm sure. I'm making a, uh, an off-shoulder cast here. There's a lot of, a lot of brush behind me uh, that I've actually caught. Uh, so I'm making an off-shoulder cast here to just keep my line over the water. Um, and I'm trying to really not disturb too many fish. They're, they're, they're a little sporadic and they're rising right now. And I also want to put nymphs into some of this deep stuff over here. So I'm trying to just like be very non-invasive uh, and keep my distance um, and cover some water. And I don't want to like, I don't want to beat up this water. I don't want to flog it with the dry fly. Um, just to, in worry about putting fish down more than more than uh than hooking them so i'm gonna give it one more second here and we will there he is cast deep cast my bad my bad I'm trying to use some of the the natural cover of the river there we go good cast let's see if he'll rise to it sometimes this glare like we're getting some sun back out in the water with this glare sometimes, it can be a little bit easier if you crouch down. I can now see my Comparadon a heck of a lot better than I could when I was standing up with this glare. So I'm just gonna take this low position just to be able to see the wings of that Comparadon a heck of a lot better. All right, nymph time. We'll leave this to the side rigged if we see some activity again. 
with these long leaders, I like to hook it up, not on the rod guide, but on one of my, uh, my line guides. And we'll try the nymphs. Trim the short tag, get them nymphs out. Let's go to work. All right, I'm gonna go Iron Lotus, and with the cloud cover the way it is, I want a, I want a silver bead black body fly. I'm going right here, Frenchy. Silver bead of Frenchy. Egan's got his new silver bullet betas. And uh, I think that fly is a perfect imitation for what I'm talking about here. I'm gonna go silver bead on the top. Maybe it matches some of those emergent betas we've been seeing. Maybe it doesn't, I don't know. But that's what I'm doing here. It's my, it's my thought process. I'm going to wait out away from the stuff behind me. I'm going to work on fishing kind of upstream and back down towards me. So what I'm doing here is I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm watching to see if my line jumps out, right? Um, I'm casting where I saw those risers. And what I'm doing is just trying to stay tight with it. And I'm going to just like... Just hop it a little bit. I'm finding just a little bit of bottom here, which is great. I'll come just towards the center just a little bit more. Real head, it's, a, it's a interesting with how boily this water is. It's kind of interesting to gauge depth here. Uh, based on what my flies are telling me, it's shallower than I think it is. I'm going to try a couple kind of quartered right through the center here. I had set up my, my rig thinking we were going to be fishing pretty deep, but I don't know if that'll be the case. Another couple through this area, just kind of straight out across. Might have to decrease my fly weight if I am, in fact, getting a lot of bottom. See if we can't end up in that seam across the way a little bit better. And as it's coming through, I'm trying to maintain that nice, slight, slight belly to the line a little bit. And I'm using, you can see, I'm using this hand to help control all that stuff. Pitch one out across there a little bit. Oh. See that cider jump? Probably not, but I did. I'm going to let this one swing out just a little bit. I'm going to look upstream and see what the heck's going on here. This is shallower than I thought it was. Nothing wrong with that. That's deep right there though. You got this, I think you got a really, you could probably see it in the, in the overhead footage. I bet you've got a really hard scoop here and these fish are right on the outside edge of it. This light is awful here. Um, it's really frustrating. Uh, I would see so much better if I was across the river fishing into it. And uh, that's what I'm gonna go do. I'm gonna go across the river and fish into it. Because otherwise, you're going to find that you beat yourself up trying to see something. And in the process, either miss fish, spook fish, just kind of ruin some of the, uh, the opportunities there. As I'm crossing, it's kind of cool. I see tons of little midges on the water. Uh, some really nice depth with some good chunk in it here. So I'm going to start fishing right here. Oh gosh, this is so much better. Really happy with this change already. I'll send one right down the outside of it first because um, I'm going to end up walking into this and I want to make sure I fish through what I'm about to walk through. These two, two and a half millimeter beads feel really well coming through here. I'm finding some depth. I'm not finding bottom, which is great. Right through the gut of this thing now. There's a rock there that a fish could be living up, up behind or in front of. Oh, and you can see that cider is lit up by the sun now versus hiding in the shade. So much better. 
my happy man on this side of the river. Let's get some fish now. So that's cast number two, where I was uh, expecting to have some kind of feedback, right? Based on the number of risers we saw, um, I may switch tactics here. My first thought is, with how up they were for a little bit, like uh, that maybe I'm underneath them, right? So I may try something a little different. When I set up my rig here, uh, I set up a little bit longer tag because I thought I might want to fish dry dropper through this and I may end up doing it. I mean, this is right on the line where those fish were sitting. At this point, I'm being stubborn. I should have made a fly change already. Tick, tick the little bottom there, which I liked. All right, so I'm gonna make a quick fly change. Got schmutz on me. It's never a good sign when you pull it up out of the water and you see that. I'm gonna grab a nice buoyant dry fly. This is Umqua's Stubby Chubby. Um, kind of a micro chubby on an awesome little hook. And I'm gonna do it on my same top dropper, right? I wanna keep these flies a little higher. I'm worried I'm underneath the fish. Uh, and so I've got my little dry fly, happy as can be here, gonna dance on the surface. I'm just gonna give it a little bit of love to make sure it rides just like I want it to. I don't see them rising anymore, but boy, they ought to be in there. Midges are going pretty good. Maybe I'll put on a midge instead of a betis uh, for a dropper. I'm gonna make the same kind of cast, but this time that nymph is now suspended and fishing way, way higher in the column uh, than I was before. And the dry dropper, one of the things I really love about it, I can fish further into that dead water um, than I could previously. Uh, when you've got the double nymph rig on and you're gonna fish into that water, what ends up happening is that inevitably it swings just a little bit towards me and now I can just keep it out further um, and really that dead drift, that high kind of presentation. I'd love to get some feedback here. Just like a, just a nice solid eat. Right through that foam line where we were seeing those active fish. Let's see if they're still kind of looking up. You can see I'm keeping uh, keeping my line off the water completely. Drag free, dead drift, blah, blah, blah. It's not doing anything, so we don't need to talk about it too much. Send one straight out in front of us. See, I can just let it sit in that dead water. The other thing I like about this rig, I can kind of dance it a little bit and animate the, uh, the dry fly. Especially when there are prolific caddis, that presentation can be just unreal how good that is. I'm going to go up just a little bit further up this edge and come into that a little bit more. I know there's fish in there, so we're going to figure out how to get them to eat. So one of these things with Euronymph, I hate this big back end wash stuff. It gets deep, uh, but you got to get, you got to use yourself to get to the target, right? Uh, our whole thing here is keeping line off the water. Um, and so I've got I've to use the length of my arm, the length of my rod, and my legs to get me where I want to be in position so I can effectively fish this stuff. All right, this is like, this is like quadruple fail. I'm going to do three more casts in here, and then I'm going to change it up. The sun is coming out. Uh, I haven't seen a fish rise in a while. Um, maybe you guys have with the drone up there, but I can't from my angle at all. So I, this is getting real deep in here too. 
So I'm going to change tactics here after this drift. I feel so good about this drift. This is right where we were seeing those fish rising. I've got a little lotus just hanging underneath my dry fly about 24 inches deep. I know I'm getting a really good dead drift. I'm going to make a change. All right, lob off the dry fly. I'm going to change up things just a little bit. I'm going to take this same lotus. I'm going to move it up to that top position. And this time I'm going to try a jig streamer. Since the dead drifts aren't uh, working as well as I was hoping, I'm going to see if I can't kind of aggravate these fish into biting. I chose a, uh, it's a real natural coloration. It's got a little bit of crinkle flash, a little bit of purple on the underbelly. Just something to, something to make something happen here. We're gonna plug it in right, right down the belly of the beast. I'm gonna sink it down. I'm gonna let it dead drift, get to depth. And then I'm just gonna slight jig it through. I found a little bottom on that one, which is great news. So we'll kind of keep it up a little bit higher. And the eats with this can be freaking awesome if they freaking eat it. So you can see here, uh, at least from my perspective, oh, that was a bite, that stinks. Uh, you can see how much tighter my whole rig is. It's because I am fishing a fly that's too heavy. Um, no question about that. I'm just kind of fish it like I would a regular streamer in this case and kind of pluck it in and jig it around let it sink right down that good stuff find that depth kind of bounce it around come start to fish this really big drop off that's heavy my flies I lost contact for a second there this is a this is pushy bringing everything jigging it through this first drift we've got like a weird back eddy current Hard to get a good drift, so I'm just kind of dancing it through here. Trying a hybrid streamer nymph at the moment. I'm sure this looks as good from above as it looks from this angle. Uh, same, eight on the drop. That's my bad, that's two in a row. So as this, as this jig nymph is falling like straight down, that's when they're eating it and they are sucking it in and letting it go super fast. So I missed two on that. I'm gonna do another fly change in a second. I mean, this streamer was good. I just do not feel like I'm getting enough response to it for how juicy this looks. And I'm trying to be cautious because like this water looks fabulous and I don't want to destroy it and ruin it by walking through it or doing something dumb. The only issue you have with jigging instead of dead drifting is each jig, you kind of do pull the fly towards you. It's hard to maintain a further distance when jigging, um, which can be fine, right? I'm gonna let this one swing out. Dude, I'm going to try a silver tag nymph. Sometimes a tag nymph's an awesome change up, man. I need a change up. So with all these crazy currents in here, I'm really trying to pick my seam that I'm trying to get my flies to come down. And I'm trying to fish light to let the current move them so they don't just fall down. This is freaking deep in here. I want the current to keep them moving as much as I can. And it's so deep over there. There he is. Great success. So I want to sweep the fish up over to this side so I can get him ready to land here. Now that he's kind of in front of me, see what he ate. He ate the top dropper, which is 
Ba -ba -ba -ba. Pheasant tail. Nice rainbow. Wait till he's not digging his head down into the water. Just get him right in the net. Get that little barbless fly out. Oh, he's hot. Came out, came alive in the net. Oh no, he ate the little caddis, CDC caddis. Awesome. Pretty fish. All right, CDC caddis. So they still have a pheasant tail on the bottom. I'm going to change that out to something with CDC. Uh, just to try to ride the momentum we have all of a sudden. Holy cow, it's a wave of momentum. Let's open this back up. And that was a really subtle fly. Uh, not a lot going on there. I'm trying to choose wisely here for a nice, just subtle CDC. Dude, I'm going to put this tag nymph back on. Silver bead, black body, orange tag. Fall favorite. I mean, that fish was down five feet, I'd say. Uh, ate that fly nice and confidently. It's a tough place to see with all this contrast on the far side. That was another bite. Uh, I felt that one. I didn't see it. And as I was commenting about the, the contrast, it's really important to be able to see your stuff. You can't see what you're doing. It's hard to guess what's happening. So I'm going to change up. I'm going to put a heavier version of that same CDC on the bottom. And we're going to go light. Ooh, right there. Three knots, you can time pretty fast. All right, so there's a bunch of fish living up there. I'm gonna go catch those. Presenting flies pretty damn hard. Dude, it's just a hard knock life. Crushed it. Hey, hey, all of them need love. I give this one plenty. Bold move, my little friend, bold move. Ate the hare's ear, love that. Love that. Copper bead. No BS. Just a great little pattern. Let's go get another one. I think the interesting thing about a lot of that is I, uh, that's water I've put flies in previously, right? Uh, so that's always kind of interesting. I hate thinking about that, but you know, conditions change. Fly choice changes, just settled up the patterns, got rid of any kind of additional whatever, and we tagged the fish. Just kind of like jigging it to check it, right? Because sometimes you can get out of contact with these flies when you get these weird back eddy kind of fast meat slow. And uh, the bite hasn't been, they haven't been crushing the spines of these nymphs. So I just want to make sure that I'm in good contact with all these fish um, as I go through. Another little guy, another hare's ear eater. CDC, man. I think that's the, uh, the pattern I'm finding at the moment. Flies with CDC. We're gonna get back in there, see if we can't find something a little bit bigger, come right down this edge again. It's interesting, all those fish have eaten the top dropper, right? So I'm trying to actively keep my flies a little bit higher than plunging down to the bottom. Uh, and in here, man, oh, punish that. I don't know how I didn't get that fish. Ham boned that thing. It's just like amazing how many fish I'm missing. 
I'm impressed. I'm impressed. It's not easy to miss this many. But you know what? You play the game. So we've wrapped up the fishing portion here. Uh, you guys got to see how I worked one piece of water here, right? And uh, the, the problems, the solutions that we all face through there and you know, each piece of water is different. Each one's going to have its own set of problems and solutions you're going to figure out. And, uh, and, you know, you can really see, like, sometimes positioning was the key. Sometimes fly change was the key. Sometimes fly weight was the key. And there's a lot of different elements to play with. Again, when we looked at the box uh, portion of this, that's why having a lot of options becomes really important. If, if you open your fly box and you say, I don't believe I'm going to catch a fish on any of these, you are doomed. So, so having good options in your fly box is really important. And then knowing where to position yourself and where those fish should be. Um, and oftentimes, especially today, they weren't where I thought they were gonna be. Um, I put flies in, a lot of flies, in certain pieces of water that I thought were gonna be really great, and they weren't. And then, you know, lo and behold, there were fish that came out of uh, interesting spots. So uh, work every piece fully um, and don't have too many preconceived notions about what they should be doing, what you believe they should be doing, but let them tell you what they're up to and, uh, you know, and have some fun doing it. Don't swear too much. If you like this video and some of the other ones and all of the great tra Trout's content, there's a like button and a subscribe button. I'm not sure where they are on the bar below, but hit those. You can smash them even if you feel inclined.